What is the Avira Anti-Avira Rescue System? The Avira Rescue System is a Linux-based boot disk that will detect and remove malware, spyware, and viruses from a damaged or unbootable computer. The Avira Rescue System is a bootable CD or DVD, or a USB thumb drive, that you can boot to even when the computer won't start up. Once you have started to the Avira application, you can run a virus scan of your system and remove whatever it finds. Remove all of these viruses before Windows starts will help to completely remove all traces of them that would not be possible if Windows had loaded the virus files. Removal of the virus may allow your system to be able to start up once again. Let's download the Avira Antivira Rescue System. Open a web browser like Internet Explorer. In the address bar. Enter avira.com, A-V-I-R-A dot C-O-M, and then press Enter. On the Avira homepage, click the Download button. By default, it brings you to the Downloads for Home. Click the Utilities button. We want to download the Avira Antivira Rescue System. We could just click the download button, but that would download the exe or executable version. Under the download button, let's click the more versions link. On the download of Vera page, we can see if we look under product installation files that there are two available options for download. We can download the rescue system as either an exe or as an ISO image file. We can run the Avira Antivira Rescue System by installing it on either a CD, DVD, or on a USB thumb drive. If we want to install on a CD or DVD, we will download the .exe file, which is a self-extracting executable file that will extract the contents and then with its own built-in utility burn them to a CD or DVD drive if you have one supported. If we want to install and run it from a USB drive, we'll want to download the ISO image file. If we create a bootable USB drive, we will also need to download an additional piece of software to create it, but it's very small and quick. For this tutorial, we will be downloading and installing the ISO to a USB drive, but I'll also show you the executables interface in case you want to create a CD or a DVD. Let's click to select the Avira Antivira Rescue System in the ISO format. On the download information bar, click the down arrow button to the right of the Save button, and then click the Save As button. A Save As window will open. Browse to the location that you want to save the file. Make sure it's somewhere you can remember easily, like the desktop. We'll click the Select Desktop, and then click the Save button. The time it takes to download will vary depending on the speed of your connection. The total downloaded is around 250 megabytes. Now I downloaded both versions of the file before to show you. We can see that I have both the ISO and the EXE downloaded. If you wanted to burn this onto a CD or DVD, and you have a DVD or CD burner in your computer, you would put a blank CD or DVD in the drive, and then double-click on the .exe file. An open file security warning window will open. Click the Run button. You'll then be brought to the Burn Avira Rescue CD. There's a drop-down in the middle. We can see on mine that it's empty. If you have a compatible CD or DVD burner, it would show up in the list here, and you would just simply select it. After selecting the correct drive, you would click the Burn CD button. If you're going to be running the Avira Rescue System from a CD or DVD, then you can skip over this next section, where we're going to be creating a bootable USB drive from the ISO image downloaded. To be able to take the ISO image file you downloaded and put that onto our USB drive, we can't just copy it. We need to download a new utility called UNetBootin to properly load the ISO image file to our USB drive. 
Unit boot is a utility that allows you to burn ISO images of Linux distributions directly to USB devices and makes it bootable. The rescue system is based off Linux, so it works with us. Let's download Unit Boot. Open a web browser like Internet Explorer. In the address bar, enter Unet Boot. Dot sourceforge dot net and then press enter. On the UNET boot and homepage, click the download for Windows button. On the download information bar, click the down arrow button next to the right of save and select save as. On the Save As window that opens, select the location to save the file. This does not contain an installer. This is just an executable, so you run it from wherever you save it. No installation is required. Let's select the desktop, and then click the Save button. And we can see that it downloaded here. It's best to format the USB drive before running UNET Bootin. UNET Bootin won't, by default, format the drive. It'll just dump the files on top of what is already there. Click the Windows Start button, and then select Computer. Under Devices with Removable Storage, find the USB drive you want to use. And a warning here, you want to make sure that you have selected the correct drive. If you select wrong, you could delete wanted information. I know that this is my USB drive here at around 15 gigabytes. It's supposed to be a 16 gigabyte drive, but there's a little less than that usable. We can see that there currently are files on it. Once you're sure you have the right device selected, right click and select Format. The Format Removable Disk window will open. Make sure FAT32 is selected for the file system. Ensure that Quick Format is selected. If it is deselected, it will perform a full format, which takes much longer. If the drive is acting funny, or it's been a long time since you've done a full format, you may want to do that. Click the Start button. You will get a warning telling you that you are about to erase all of the data on the disk. Click the OK button. It should only take a minute or two to do the quick format of the drive. Once complete, click the OK button. Click the Close button to close out the format window. We can now see their USB drive has no files. Let's start up UNET Bootin and create our bootable USB. Find the UNET Bootin icon on the desktop that we just downloaded, and then double click on it. On the security warning window that opens, Deselect Always Ask before opening this file, and then click the Run button. The Unit Boot and Application window will open. Click the Select the Radio button next to Disk Image. Ensure that ISO is selected in the Image Type dropdown. Click the Select Disk Image File button. This will allow us to select the ISO we downloaded earlier. The Open Disk Image File window will open. We need to browse to and select the ISO we downloaded. And then click the Open button. It should have correctly selected the USB drive for the type, and have the correct drive letter listed next to Drive, which in this case it does. It's our E drive. This is the same drive letter you selected earlier when formatting the USB drive. With the appropriate settings changed, click the OK button to begin the creation process.
After a quick installation, you'll see the installation complete reboot message if everything went well. Click the exit button to close out the UNet Boot application. You may get a program compatibility assistant window asking if everything installed correctly. Click to select this program installed correctly. To be able to cover using the Avira Rescue System, I'm going to be running this on a virtual machine so I can record the entire process. You'll probably be following along on a real computer, but the steps should be the same. Stick the USB drive we just created into the system that you want to scan. You will need to select the USB drive or the CD DVD drive if you created that instead as a default boot device for your system to boot to it. This is done through the computer's BIOS. You typically enter this by pressing F1, F2, or delete as soon as the computer turns on, when it's at the black screen before you see Windows start to load. When you first turn the computer on, if you look at the bottom of the screen, it will tell you what button to push. You then need to find the boot order and change it so that the USB is the device number one. With the Avera Rescue System disk inserted, turn on the computer. If you need to change the language, you can select the drop down here. The first thing we want to do is update to the latest virus definitions. Even if you just downloaded the file, there will still be new viruses out there, so make sure you update it. Click the Update tab. On the Rescue System window, you'll be told that the Rescue System can update via the Internet, so long as an Internet connection is present. Click the Yes button. You'll get a message that the scanner is updating, and we'll see Update finished successfully, so long as everything went fine. Now that the update is complete, click back on the Virus Scanner tab. To begin the scan, click the Start Scanner button. The scan will begin. As it scans, it will display the last object scanned, along with counts for scanned files, scanned directories, and the elapsed time. If it finds any problematic files, those will show up under Detections, Suspicious Files, and Alerts. Depending on the speed and number of files on your system, the scan time will vary. But figure it will take at least 15 or 20 minutes. When the scan is finished, you can review the information in the central pane. We can see that it found an alert for the EI CAR test signature test virus. I placed this file on the computer before we ran the scan. This isn't a real virus, but it's a test virus that's made available at EICAR.org to test antivirus software. In this case, the action it took was to rename the file. Depending on what it finds, it may also remove or quarantine the file. If you want to save the log file, you can click the Save button. Select the location. We'll just save it to the root of the C drive. And then you can review it later. Now that the scan's completed, let's click the Shut Down button. You'll be asked again if you want to shut down or restart the computer. Click the shutdown button. Wait for the shutdown to complete. Remove the USB drive from the computer, and then start it again as you normally would. Hopefully if there are viruses or spyware causing your system not to boot properly, this will fix it after having removed them.
Many of you may also have needed to run a bootable antivirus program like this because you couldn't delete the files while Windows was running. If your system still won't boot after removing the viruses you found, you may need to repair the master boot record. I will place a link on screen for when I make a tutorial on how to use the fix boot command to repair startup problems with Windows. You should now have the necessary information to be able to create a bootable CD or DVD or a bootable USB drive with the Avira Antivira Rescue System on it. You should then be able to boot to the program and use it to run a virus scan of your computer.